Learning cloud doesn't need to be hard, but without the right approach, you'll waste hours and potentially thousands of dollars in courses that leave you no closer to your goals. As someone who went from complete beginner to AWS cloud engineer at a top London bank, I understand the pain of self-learning cloud from scratch. The good news is there's a way to make it a lot easier and it's simpler than you might think. In this video, I'll reveal my three-step framework for learning cloud in the most efficient way. But first, I need to explain the biggest challenge that makes learning cloud so hard and there's a simple fix for it. So imagine two people, let's call them Alex and Sam, who both want to become chefs. Alex buys every cookbook he can find, enrolls in online cooking courses and spend months memorizing recipes and techniques. He can tell you the exact temperature at which proteins denature, but he rarely steps foot in an actual kitchen. Sam, on the other hand, takes a more practical approach. She starts by making simple dishes at home, gradually working her way up to more complex recipes. She volunteers at a local restaurant and learns from experienced chefs. When she encounters a problem or wants to improve a dish, she looks up specific information. Now, fast forward a year and both Alex and Sam apply for jobs at a high-end restaurant. But when it comes to the practical cooking test, Alex fumbles. He knows the theory behind everything, but his knife skills are clumsy and he struggles to manage multiple dishes at once. Sam, however, breezes through the practical test. Her techniques might not be perfect, but she adapts quickly and produces tasty, well-presented dishes. Although she can't recite a lot of facts, she demonstrates a solid understanding of all the fundamental areas of cooking. This highlights two different approaches to learning cloud. The academic way, like Alex's method, involves deep dives into theory and understanding all the details before practical application. The practical way, like Sam's, focuses on learning through doing. Now, I'm not saying the academic approach is totally useless. But for most people who just want to get a job in cloud or build some cool stuff, the practical route is going to be way more effective. Think about it like this. Say you wanted to learn a new language. Would you spend months memorizing a dictionary or would you prefer to start practicing your skills? Maybe start speaking to people and writing things. Sure, you'll probably make a lot of mistakes at first, but you'd learn so much faster and at the end of the day, the skills you gain will be a lot more useful. The truth is, the biggest thing that's probably making it hard for you to learn cloud is your approach. If you've been taking the academic way, you're making things way harder on yourself than it needs to be. But okay, some of you might already know this. The real question is, how do we actually start taking this practical approach? Well, follow this simple three-step framework. But before we cover that, I'm currently building a step-by-step -step system designed to take you from zero experience to having an interview-ready portfolio of impressive AWS projects. You'll use Terraform to build these projects, then follow a simple blueprint to share them on your resume. You'll also receive personalized feedback on your project from a professional cloud engineer. If this sounds good to you, join the free waitlist at the link below and get early access with an exclusive discount. So step one, you know, this kind of reminds me when I first started learning to cook. I was really excited to make all these fancy dishes I saw on TV. But when I actually got in the kitchen, I had no idea where to start. I'd try to make some complicated recipe with a million different ingredients, get overwhelmed and end up ordering takeaway instead. It wasn't until I scaled things back and started with simple dishes that I actually started to improve. I'd pick one new recipe each week, something challenging enough to teach me new skills, but not so hard that I'd give up halfway through. Over time, those small wins added up and I became a much better cook. Now, learning cloud is similar. It's easy to get overwhelmed by all the services and technologies out there. But the key is to start small with practical projects you actually care about. The absolute best way to learn cloud is to find a real problem you want to solve and then design a cloud solution to tackle that problem. Now, I get it. Coming up with project ideas can be hard, but here's something you can do. Pay attention to the small annoyances and problems you encounter in your day-to-day -day life. Maybe there's some task you have to do manually that could be automated. Or maybe there's a process at work that's more complicated than it needs to be. For example, I recently read this blog post from Werner Vogels, the CTO of AWS. He was spending a lot of time in meetings and wanted a way to quickly get summaries of each one. So his team built a tool using AWS services to generate meeting summaries using AI. He took a real pain point from his daily life and used cloud tech to solve it. The key is to start with something that's challenging enough to stretch your skills, but not so huge that you get overwhelmed. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, but I still have no idea what kind of project to build. Well, don't worry. If you're really stuck, there are some great project ideas out there already to get you started. One that I really like is the Cloud Resume Challenge. It's a semi-guided project that walks you through building a resume website using various cloud services. It's a great way to learn the basics. The cool thing is, as you work on these projects, you'll start to develop a sort of cloud mindset. You'll begin to see opportunities to use cloud services all around you. And that mindset is incredibly valuable in today's job market. Companies are always on the lookout for people who can identify business problems and come up with innovative solutions. As you work on these projects, you're also building up a portfolio of work to show potential employers. It's one thing to list a bunch of certifications on your resume. It's a whole other level to be able to point to actual working cloud solutions that you've built from the ground up. So don't get too hung up on finding the perfect project idea. The important thing right now is to just get started. But what do you do after you found something to build? Step two. Okay, imagine you're
you're in a kitchen, ready to create a free course meal. But where do you start? It's important to realize that you don't have to cook everything all at once. You can break this down into smaller, more manageable tasks. Maybe you start with the appetizer, focusing on each ingredient and each step of the recipe, then move on to the main course and finally the dessert. Before you know it, you've created a whole meal, one dish at a time. This approach of breaking things down into smaller parts isn't just useful in the kitchen. It's a useful strategy for tackling cloud projects in general. This helps you learn more effectively. When you're working on smaller focused tasks, you can really dive deep into understanding each component and each task. So, you know, how do you actually put this into practice? Well, follow this checklist. First, define your project's overall goal. What exactly are you trying to build or achieve? Next, break that goal down into major components or features. At this stage, it's helpful to think about what particular cloud services you want to use for each component. For example, if you need some kind of storage service, you may consider AWS S3. Each of these components will end up being a task that you have to do. Once you have your components, create an architecture diagram with the cloud services you want to use. This is like a map of your project showing how all the different pieces fit together. Don't worry about making it perfect or look amazing. Let's look at a real world example of this approach in action. Consider the meeting summarizer that I spoke about earlier that was built by Werner Vogel's team at AWS. First, they started by identifying the goal. Save people time by providing meeting summaries. Next, break that down into individual components and tasks. In this case, you would need a way to upload and store the audio file from meetings. This also needs to be transcribed into text. This text would need to be analyzed and summarized by some kind of Gen AI service. And finally, we need to get the text output. And this is all represented by this architecture diagram. Now, once you've done this, it's important to organize the tasks you've identified. This is where a Kanban board comes in handy. A Kanban board is a visual tool for managing tasks. You can use a physical board with sticky notes or an online tool like Trello or Asana. The basic setup is to have columns for to do, in progress, and done. You create a card or note for each task and move it through these columns as you work on it. Now, you might be thinking, I've spent all this time in planning a project, but haven't actually built anything yet. And that's fair. But all of this is important in giving you the motivation to actually complete the projects. Also, it's something great you can refer to in job interviews if they ask about how you sort of break tasks down or structure your projects. But at this stage, it is time to move on to the most critical step, step three. So here's the truth that you probably already know. If you want to get the most value out of your cloud projects, you've got to work on them consistently. It's not about pulling all-nighters or cramming for hours on end. It's about showing up day after day and putting in the work. So how do we make sure we stay consistent with our cloud projects? Well, there are three techniques that I've used a lot that have helped me. Number one is to commit to a daily target. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend hours and hours every day. That's just not realistic. Even just 30 minutes can make a huge difference if you do it regularly. It's similar to committing to a gym schedule. Once you get started, it will be hard to fall out of that schedule. Number two relates to what I mentioned earlier, and it's to break down each project into smaller tasks. You know, if I told you to build a whole website and host it on AWS, it may seem quite difficult if you've never worked with cloud before. I like to break down a project into tasks that I can do within 30 minutes. Now, you can either try doing this yourself or ask ChatGPT to do it for you. You should end up with a list of more manageable tasks that you can do within 30 minutes, and you can quickly run through this when you have the time. I actually think this is a hugely underutilized technique. You get a dopamine rush whenever you're able to tick off a task, and this is really what keeps you consistent. And number three is to utilize accountability. Maybe you've got a friend who's also learning tech stuff. Why not team up? If you don't know anyone in person, there are tons of online communities where you can find study buddies or accountability partners. This is great to keep you motivated. So there you have it. Stick with it over time and it will work. But what if I told you that just building these projects won't be enough to get a job? There are five cloud concepts that I think are absolutely critical for all aspiring cloud engineers to learn. If you don't know these, then you'll struggle during the application process and definitely in the interviews. So watch this video next to learn exactly what these concepts are.